So then we've already talked a little bit about, you know, just as we've been these other things, but we'll talk a little bit more about the sources of stress, right? Because ultimately we want to quantify the forces, you know, in order to solve problems like for wellbore stability or for fault motion, we need to quantify the forces uh, and the way we're doing that is with respect to a stress, the far field stress, and that stress arises primarily due to tectonic motion. So, like we said, plate driving stresses, this is because new materials being generated, pushing, applying a force to the sides, sides of the plate, that force is resisted by friction as the other side of the plate is subducted, and that causes stress. There's also drag forces on the base of the plate, right? So like I mentioned earlier, the, the, we're interested in the lithosphere, which includes the uppermost mantle. And the uppermost mantle is a very viscous, you know, part solid, part fluid material. And you guys have all had fluids, uh, fluid mechanics, so you understand how viscous forces arise uh, in fluids undergoing like shear motion, right? And so, um, in this case, you have plates moving over the top of a very viscous fluid, if you will, and that causes a drag force also on the bottom of the plate, and that can give rise to stress. So there's other things like density anomalies, okay? So of course, you know, we said the aerial density is the same anywhere on the Earth, but uh, the, the, the same, almost the same, right? So in other words, you're, you're not going to have a 10 order of magnitude density difference from one place to the other, because if you did, that part of the crust would just sink into the mantle, right? Uh, but you could have small anomalies, right, where the strength of the material is strong enough to overcome them, uh, overcome them and just sinking in, but nevertheless, there's enough density difference that it causes a body force due to gravity. Right? So you have something that is de more dense attached to something that's less dense. The same gravity is acting on both of them. And so therefore, there's a difference in the body forces, and that would apply a stress to the plate. Right? Uh, plate thinning and thickening. And this is kind of an interesting case, because this is actually a case where stress causes more stress. So uh, let's, let's talk about thickening first. Right? So you have um, you have new material being generated, pushing one side of the plate, friction on the other side of the plate, and, and you're, so you're essentially pushing on the plate on both sides. What happens when you take a piece of rubber and you push on both sides of it? What, what would happen if I took a little piece of rubber and I squeezed it. It's going to deform and it's going to get thicker, right? Because of something called Poisson effect. So if I, if I apply the same force, it's going to get thicker. And I use the example rubber because it's probably it's something that you might have all done before. You can rubber deforms enough that it you can actually visualize it. In fact. Does anybody know what the Poisson ratio of rubber is? It's about, a, it's close to a half, which means, it effectively what it means is if I, uh, you know, if I, if I, for every sort of one unit that I squeeze it, right, if I squeeze it one inch, then it's going to get a half an inch taller. Right? So it's pretty significant. Poisson ratio of rock is about Point two, so it's much less than that. But nevertheless, it still happens. Right? If I squeeze any material, it's going to thicken. Okay, so I'm squeezing the material, thickening it, making it thicker, possibly densifying the material, making it more dense. Right? In the case of rocks, you can do that. So I'm making the material more dense, the same gravity force is being applied to. Uh, you know, the same, the same gravity applied to something more dense is going to create a bigger body force. Right? So this is a case where I'm stressing it externally due to plate tectonics, 
causing it to be thicker, causing the force due to gravity to be more. The stress causes stress. And then the opposite of that would be plate thinning. Now we, now we don't really, in very few places in the Earth, I think it's a part of Northern Africa where this is occurring, but very few places in the Earth do you, you actually pull on plates. So you don't usually have a situation where you're literally pulling on a plate, a tectonic plate, which, you know, uh, causing it to thin. But there are, there are cases where the plate has been under significant t compression, and then now that's being alleviated due to some mechanism. Right. So it's been under significant compression, and due to some change, then it, now it's being, that, that, that pressure is being lessened over time, and therefore the plate is extending, and that causes the plate to thin, which will cause a lower body force. Right. So again, stress causes stress, or changes stress. Uh, plate flexure, again, when you have subduction and you have oceanic plates moving under continental plates, that plate can flex. Right. And the, the magnitude of that flexure can be measured, it can be seen, uh, can be measured on the surface of the Earth. And so we're talking about, you know, large distance, possibly as long as a thousand kilometers, where one plate is moving under the other. And of course, you know, anytime I have a plate or a beam, it's, it's simpler to think of this as a beam, a one-dimensional thing, and I flex it, right? If I apply a moment to it, to both to both ends, right? That will cause a stress in the plate, right? even without any external normal forces. Right? If I just bend something, I cause a stress because I cause an elongation of the center line. Anybody remember what the formula for, for that is? Yeah. Right. Stress equals like MC over I, right? Where M is the applied moment, uh, uh, C is the, the location uh, that you're, that you're you know, the location, the vertical location uh, where, you're, where you're taking this measurement uh, and I is the uh, moment of inertia. So that plate flexure causes an additional stress. Right? Yeah? Uh, it, it possibly could. It possibly could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it could be, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, so you could have you, you, you could have tensile failure here, right? Um, but you'd, you'd also have compression down here. Right? And so so it, it, it's, it's not, you know, the most significant, like I said several times, the most significant source of stress is just due to tectonic motion. But there is other ways. And we'll, we'll actually learn later in the class that there is, there is an upper bound um, on how much stress can develop in the earth because ultimately the crust is a brittle, it's a rock that is a brittle material. And so ultimately uh, you will fail the rock and that sets an upper bound on what the stress can be anyway. And we'll talk about that later. Good question though.